Oh, right, Miku Expo was last night. I wonder how it went. I could probably check on Twitter. Hmm. Oh. My god. <laughs> wow, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's, that's not how it's gonna be for every night, right? There's no way. Maybe it was technical difficulties. Hmm. Well, Oregon's is tomorrow. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Surely they wouldn't do that for the whole tour. Hey and howdy howdy and hi! Welcome back to the channel, thanks for dropping by. I know it's been a bit, sorry about that guys, I've been working on another animatic and animatics kind of take a little bit of time to make. Um, but aside from that, I had to pause my work because something happened. Why don't we talk about Miku Expo, shall we? Now for those of you that don't know what Miku Expo is, or what Vocaloid is, Vocaloid is basically a vocal synthesizer that people make songs out of by, you know, changing up the voice, making it say things. And, you know, at some point in time, a few years ago, someone put a face to the vocal synthesizer, and that face was Hatsune Miku. Hatsune Miku got popular, Vocaloid got popular, and popularity, with, especially with singers, ends up in concerts, and that's where Miku Expo comes in today. Miku Expo is basically a concert that has these vocal synthesizers singing as holograms. And that's where the problem is arising. Now, for those of you that don't know, I am a huge fan of Vocaloid. I love Hatsune Miku. I was exposed to Vocaloid at a very young age. My first song was World Is Mine when I was scrolling on the early days of YouTube. I have a history with Vocaloid and I still love it to this day. And my favorite artist is Deco27. I absolutely love, love their work. Um, and I have a lot of producers that I enjoy the t uh, today. And also Project Voltage. I'm still planning on drawing those designs, guys. I just haven't gotten to it, but I will gush about Project Voltage another day. For now, Miku Expo. Now, you see, a few months ago, last year, when they announced Miku Expo, I was discussing it with my partner and, and I was like, oh my god, that would be so cool. If they're having a tour in North America after like how long? 2020? 2021? This is like the first time in a while that Miku Expo came back and I've never been to a Vocaloid concert. So, you know, my partner was like, let's just go. So we got the tickets and I was like, oh my god, right? We were so excited, especially because he doesn't know a lot about Vocaloid, right? But he still got the tickets and he knew I liked Vocaloid. Uh, thank you, honey. I love you so much. But we were so excited because this is, first of all, our first concert going together and also first Vocaloid concert. And I saw the ones that were happening in Japan and I was super excited because of the hologram that they have at the shows. Japan goes big with these concerts and I assumed, foolishly, that it would be the same thing over here. But that's not what happened. You see, on the evening of April 4th, when the first show of the Miku Expo happened in Vancouver, by the way, all hell broke loose on Twitter. My partner found out first and had to tell me that Miku was in fact not going to be a hologram. Now before I go on about the whole hologram bit, first I have to rewind a bit back in time when the Miku Expo was first announced because the snowball didn't start at the hologram. It started with Crunchyroll. You see, Crunchyroll is sponsoring this event, but they don't really have that good of a reputation. Crunchyroll is kind of known for fumbling the bag when it comes to these kinds of things. And truth be told, they did fumble the bag with the pre-sale. See, when they were first announcing Miku Expo and starting to sell the tickets, people who I believe were subscribed to Crunchyroll had early access to get the tickets before everyone else. They were supposed to have a link or something to get them to get the early bird access to the tickets. However, someone messed that up because the emails they received weren't 
a one-time use per person or they didn't have like a special code that you had to put in when you went onto the website. They were available for everyone to use, so that email got leaked. And you know, scalpers do what they're gonna do. They're gonna scalp. So that was a whole disaster where the entire like tickets and everything were being sold out left and right or being sold for $500, $600. It was crazy. And, you know, I'm not gonna lie, we should've known from that start that this was gonna not be great. Especially because it continued with the merchandise, because the merchandise was very quickly scalped and sold out as well. Even on the website right now, most of the stuff is sold out. But that was months ago, surely they would've stepped it up, right? No. Apparently in Vancouver, April 4th at 8 o'clock when the show started, first of all, from what I've seen from people's first-hand reports on Twitter, like from people who had the VIP access as well. First of all, the VIP bags are okay at best, you know, they've got some goodies in there, but like not really enough to justify the raised price of the VIP tickets. Still cute, but you know, it didn't include a glow stick, which is kind of the prime like merch of the event that everyone's trying to get their grubby little mitts on. But aside from that, VIPs were told on the website that they had early access to the merchandise being sold at the venue and early access to the venue itself for their seats. When you buy your ticket, it tells you you have early access. However, it turns out that recently this has not been honored at the venues, that VIPs have not been getting their early access as to the merchandise or the venue. Which, first of all, is one big problem, because that's... They were promised that, right? Another thing... First of all, actually, hold on. I have to address this really quick, because I, I found this out and I was like, hello? It'll be very brief, I promise. But apparently someone pissed on the, on the floor of the Vancouver show? My dude, I know you're hydrating, but please, I... I was there no bathrooms? I was so confused. There were so many memes about that. And I was like, why? Anyway, I just had to bring it up really quick. I was so confused. But back to the actual show itself, when people entered the venue, they were dismayed to see this tiny little shitty TV on the stage. And much to their dismay, that's how they found out that Miku wasn't going to be a hologram. She was just going to be performing on a TV. And keep in mind, the size of the arena, the size of the stage, compared to the size of that TV, the TV was pretty small, especially for like a stage, like a, like a, like a whole place full of people. Like I feel really bad for the people who had the side tickets because they probably were not seeing that much. But it was a whole disaster. As soon as people found out, they were posting on Twitter just like what we didn't know. Cause no one said anything. Crunchyroll didn't say anything. The venue didn't say anything. There was no like prior notice of, hey guys, that hologram we promised you actually we're having a TV, right? There was none of that. Um, there was no heads up or anything. And please keep in mind, on the website, it is stated that it was gonna be a hologram. It was advertised it was going to be a hologram with like the glass paneling that they use to project the hologram. But Again, when the, everyone showed up at the venue, it wasn't a hologram. So everyone was wondering what happened. And, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of a victim of this too because my, immediately, my immediate thought was, oh, maybe it was technical difficulties. Maybe we're gonna get the, get the hologram on the next shows. Maybe something happened in Vancouver. No, no, sweet summer child. No, it will not because um, I was huffing a lot of copium that day and so it was like hundreds of thousands of other people hoping that the, that the TV was a one-time thing. I'm sorry to say it wasn't. It was not in fact a one-time thing because for the last two nights in Portland, Oregon on April 6th and San Jose, California and April 8th has also been TVs. Uh, and there's a show tonight at the time I'm recording this, April 9th. I bet you it's gonna be another TV. I bet. But as of right now, still a TV. I've kind of just given up 
the hope that it's going to be a hologram, mainly because at this point we're three days into the event. If Crunchyroll was going to do anything, they should have done it sooner. They should have done it immediately after all the backlash of the first show. But they're not going to do that. But despite the extremely like raised prices of those tickets um, and how expensive generally everything was, like they've already fumbled the bag and I already know they're not going to do anything about it. They haven't even released a public statement as to what happened. So at this point, my faith in Crunchyroll is kind of at a minimum right now. And I've kind of given up on trying to think that, that, that they're going to change it, right? Aside from that, what I am still holding out hope for is that they're going to change how they're doing merch. Because as of right now, we found out in the Portland, Oregon show on April 6th that they only had a box of 95 glow sticks for sale. 95 for a stick. For a stadium full of people, sorry, audit auditorium, the Keller Auditorium that they were performing in. An auditorium full of people, only 95 glow sticks for sale. That's crazy! That's, that's like unproportional, that's like, that's nothing. Luckily, 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 at the San Jose show, apparently they had 300 for sale. So it looks like they're finally figuring it out that they need to put more merch because there's more people. Right? They can't have a pitiful little amount of pennies to give people. No, they gotta put more merch. And that's what I'm worried about, because then you have to line up two extra hours to even get something. Which sucks, by the way, especially if you're paying so much money to fly there, to get there, to have a hotel. You at least want to walk away with something to take home and be like, yeah, I came to Miku Expo, I had a grand old time. But... You know, at least they're slowly fixing that problem. And also for the San Jose show, they actually started fixing up the setup for the TV to make it blend better into the stage. And, and, they released the live band from the cage they were in. Which, I forgot to mention, the live band was in a pitiful little cage behind the TV. They're just off in the corner. But... That's just all the negative things so far. Everyone was so up in arms about the whole situation. And it was crazy, and um, I just, I don't even know what to say. They haven't even released a public statement. I'm appalled. But aside from all that, aside from all the negative things, we should also focus on the positive. I'm still really excited for the concert. I am still going, right? This is going to be my first Miku concert. I'll, I'll be darned if I don't go with like a smile on my face. Like, nothing's going to stop me from having a good time. And luckily, other people think so as well, because I've also been seeing on Twitter how everyone is still trying to have a good time, despite all the bad things that are happening at the concert. Like, people still having high energy during the entire concert, pumped up, real having fun time. People in cosplays, like, giving out, like, stickers and stuff like that. It's great. The energy is still there. Because at the end of the day, we're all here for Miku. We're all here together. This is our fandom solidarity. And at the end of the day, that's just what that's just what's going to matter the most. You know, we shouldn't not have a good time after all this effort we spend to get here to this good time. You know, I'm still going to have fun. I'm still going to go and enjoy myself with my partner and have a good night. But don't get me wrong. I'm, st I'm still I'm still gonna be mad at Crunchyroll at the end of the day. They really fumbled the bag on this one, and they should not hear the end of it until they say something. I like I'm still waiting for that public statement because what happened? But until that public statement does get dropped, I'm going to have a good time. I'm gonna have a fun time. I'm gonna say hello to a lot of other Miku fans. You know, every, people are going to be in cosplay. It's going to be a good night. That's what I'm determined to have. But aside from that, that's just my two cents on the whole situation, right? I, I saw this whole thing unfolding and I just wanted to say something on it, you know, and just mauled together over the craziness because it's been an insane, like, week, right? It's been a crazy week. At this point, I just hope that things get better but right now, that's just really up to us. That's just up to the people attending. 
what the energy is gonna be like that night and i hope it's nothing but positivity because i'm not gonna lie the live band is still gonna slap they're carrying the whole show so yeah aside from that the drawing that you're seeing on screen is actually going to be a sticker design that i'll be giving out during the show that i'm attending um, I'm going to be walking around in a, the vampire cosplay because that's my favorite song. So if any of you guys happen to be attending the Newark, New Jersey Prudential Center show and you find a Miku the vampire cosplayer, maybe say hi, it might be me. I'll be giving out some of these designs. It'll be very limited, by the way, because stickers are a little expensive, I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I just want to say hi, you know. Maybe make some new friends or just share the energy. Honestly, I'm just trying to add to it. There's been a lot of people like giving stuff out that they've made themselves and I kind of just want to, you know, add to it. It sounded really fun. And honestly, I had such a fun time designing this sticker. It was so cute. This is the cutest Miku I've drawn. She's so cute. But yeah, aside from that, I'm still excited. None of this should stop your excitement. And at the end of the day, we can just look forward to attending together. Because at the end of this day, it's still Hatsune Miku, and I'm still gonna start crying when she starts singing. Well, I don't actually- I haven't been spoiled on the set list yet, so I don't know what she's gonna start singing. No spoilers in the comments, by the way. I will hunt you down. But whatever first song that she starts singing, I'm probably gonna bawl my eyes out while waving a non-existent glow stick if I don't happen to get my hands on one. But aside from that, you know, who's to say? Hopefully, we'll see you at the end of the road. But for now, hopefully I'll see you guys in the future once I get finished on that one animatic that I'm still working on. But at any point, I'll see you guys later.